The Brankert Master Brenograph Model F7. This was a theatrical spotlight effect unit rather than a film lighting unit. Uh, the machine that this was part of actually had two of these lamp houses and you had dissolving mechanisms and mirrors on gimbals and whatnot to where you could, you know, move the, the, uh, the pattern that this was projecting across the stage or across the ceiling of the auditorium, depending on, you know, if the ceiling of the theater was a, a flat, smooth, light-colored surface, <clears throat> it could then function as a, uh, uh, a projection screen. They used similar lamp houses with large format slide projectors, you know, before motion pictures became the norm. You had, uh, you know, uh, traveling road show slide shows where they would do the, uh, you know, glass slides. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name, that was it Dick Jerry the type or whatever, but you, know, you had uh, some rather sophisticated uh, optical contraptions that would allow, you know, the simulation of movement with, you know, non-motion picture uh, content. And, uh, you know, as things evolved, of course, this stuff all tended to get pushed into the parking lot and hauled away as scrap metal. So there are very few of these, you know, that have survived to this day. Uh, you know, th this is a, uh, a flame arc type of a carbon arc lamp where the the, 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 the light of the arc is magnified with a condenser lens. There was no reflector to concentrate the light. You were strictly dealing with the light that came off of the front of the, uh, the arc. And, uh, you know, this equipment had to be properly ventilated or you'd have dead people in the projection room because the fumes that come off of this are toxic. For our little demonstration, we didn't have an exhaust system, but for any further usage, you know, yes, an exhaust system is essential to vent the smoke out of the building. Uh, with one knob, you were able to bring the carbons together and then pull them apart to start the arc and then regulate the, the arc gap. And because this machine does not have feed motors, the operator had to you know, pay attention to the, uh, the, the, the light on the, the subject or look through the, this is a very, very dark, uh, uh, like the glass in an arc welding hood so that you could see the, the carbons as they were lit and burning and you would keep the, the carbons adjusted to keep the flame the size you wanted. The other knobs allow the uh, individual movement of the different aspects of the uh, assembly to get the carbon, to get the light source focused relative to the lens so that you'd get a, a, a uniform field of light out of the machine onto the uh, surface you were projecting on. The whole mechanism for focusing, you know, to control the size of the light you were producing, you'd move the, the, the entire mechanism back and forth relative to the stationary lens. Okay, and now on with the demonstration. Here we go. We don't have a current range selected yet. Okay. Let's uh, make sure the trim is not touching. No. Nope. You don't want to fly burn your camera. Right. So which way? Okay. Ready? Yes. And we have light.
There's the arc. Open the arc up just a little bit because they were getting too close. And that puts out a lot of light. A lot of light. So I'm making hand gestures with my hand because it's a point source. You can do that. That's good. We're running, uh, yeah, let's see, that's a 200 amp shunt. So, uh, divide by two. So, what, we're, uh, about 25 amps. Okay. That's a nice light for 25 amps. That's bright. You want to make hand gestures? That's a nice light. You might have to adjust the trim. Yeah, they're getting far apart, so bring the trim back closer together. You got to make sure you keep doing that. I've got a book somewhere of uh, hand shadows. All the things you can, you know. Uh... The carbon arc is great for hand shadows because it's a point source light. Yeah. Boy, you definitely have got to wear gloves when you change the carbon arc. Yes. Yeah. That just keeps that top rod holder up like the snow tomorrow. So, if you want to work in the theater business, this is what you got to learn how to do. Is that dowser open all the way? Because you have a, a little moon shadow. There we go. Now the dowser's open all the way. There's actually a, a lens in a box over here if we were to wanted to focus something. Well, well, it, well, well, yeah, no, there's one right here, I think. There's, there's a lens in there. I don't want to pick it up with one hand. I don't want to drop it. Okay, well, I, I saw it was glass. Yeah, we're getting, uh, our trim is getting, uh, yeah, you got to be on top of this. There's no, there's no electric feed on this thing. Yeah, you can change, change the arc position. There you go. There you go. Oh yeah, burn a hole into the neighbor's industrial unit. Oh, there you go. There's there is the arc. There is the arc. Let's uh, bring the trim in a little. Let's zoom in. There's the arc. This lamp house hasn't run in probably, I don't know, quite a few years. Yeah. With time travel, anything is possible. And there's our current. You want to open the switch? Yeah. Ready? Yep. All right. Now let's open the door. Yeah, I'm sure that they're still glowing. They're glowing. 
They're shorter than when we started. 25 amps. Make all that light with 25 amps. Okay, we're going to shut it down for right now and we'll go on to something else. A little more time travel later, next time. Thanks for watching.